Hi, I'm here with the new Lars LT tankless water heater line. If you're considering tankless water heater and you've heard all about it and you wanna know why you might wanna install one of these in your home, here's the top three reasons. The first one is space. If we look at this unit, it's very small, it's compact, and it hangs on a wall. If you don't have a basement, if you don't have a large mechanical room, these tankless water heaters can be installed in small closets and other areas that you might not normally consider for installation for a water heater. The second reason that a lot of people use tankless water heaters is because they're a little bit more efficient than a traditional storage tank water heater. That has to do with the fact that it only runs when you use hot water. So unless you're using the kitchen sink or the shower, they're not sitting there storing and maintaining water temperature like a traditional storage tank. And lastly, they don't run out. You might have heard these referred to as endless hot waters, and that is 100% correct. As long as you have electric and gas, they don't run out of hot water. So what that means is no more cold showers. Let's talk about the commercial capabilities of these recirc and standard tankless water heaters. High temperature is gonna be one of the first things we're gonna look at. Both the recirc and the standard unit can be set to a maximum temperature of 185 if needed. Keep in mind when I convert to any temperature or set temperature above 140, you are required to use at least CPVC or polypropylene vent material. Speaking of venting, we can common vent up to eight units within a single bank, and that's gonna simplify the installation, meaning one penetration for the exhaust, as well as one penetration for the air for up to eight units. Maximum units in a cascade are 16. So that means 16 units that can serve the capacity of that application. That's a quick overview of the commercial capabilities for the recirc and standard tankless water heaters. If you want to learn about how it'll save you money, save space, and never run out of hot water, let's take a deeper dive. I've taken the cover off the recirculating tankless water heater. Taking a quick tour of the components, you're going to find that on the bottom, you've got your traditional hot and cold plumbing connection, as well as your gas connection. There is a third plumbing connection on the bottom of the recirc model, and what that's for is for dedicated external recirculation. Up above, we're gonna find we have our printed circuit board with our gas leak detector. This is gonna look for any type of raw gas leak within the unit. Behind the board is a water leak sensor. Any type of leak within the cabinet, it's gonna let us know sooner versus later. In the bottom left, you're gonna find that we have our three speed Grundfos recirculating pump. This unit can handle internal, external, crossover, or on-demand type recirculating systems. Up above the pump is our display. This is where I can set the temperature for the tankless water heater. I can also program things like the program timing for the recirc pump. The heart of the unit is our stainless steel heat exchangers. Both primary and secondary are 100% stainless steel, up above that is our fan motor with our air gas mixture, as well as our gas valve. This is gonna give us our 15 to one turndown capability to deliver the precise water temperature that you need. And finally, up at the top, we've got two inch PVC and CPVC vent adapters. This unit can vent both with two inch, or if you need to go a little further, you can use three inch pipe. And that gives you a good overview of the major components within the recirculating tankless water heater. So on the recirc model, there's four ways I can choose to run the internal Grundfos recirculation pump. You can run it internal, which basically means the unit can recirc back upon itself internal. Now, why do you want that? In a house with no domestic hot water recirc line, what that's gonna help with is it's gonna speed the delivery of the hot water a little bit by keeping the volume of water that's contained in the heat exchanger warm at all times. If you're someone that has an external recirculation loop, a loop that runs out to the furthest fixture and then a dedicated return line back, that's where you can make use of the dedicated return line tapping and then allow this pump to not only keep the water internally hot, but also the temperature of the loop that goes out to the fixtures. 
that's gonna be the fastest way to get yourself hot water uh, is in external mode. The other two modes are Title 24, which is for California for on-demand type systems. And then finally for everybody else, for a retrofit in a house that does not have an external recirc line and it's hard to put one in, you can use what's called a thermal bypass or a crossover valve at a furthest sink in order to use your cold water line as your return line. So real quick, to sum that up, you've got internal recirc, external recirc, crossover, and Title 24. That's the four methods that you can set this pump up to run in a home. If installing a recirc model tankless and wanting to use the internal pump to do either internal recirc, external recirc, or crossover mode, you're gonna to have to do three things in order to set that pump up. Step one, we're gonna to have to set the time. To do that, we're going to leave the power on to the display and just push and hold the four square button in the top left corner. After holding it in, you're gonna notice the screen is gonna change. What you see blinking is the current parameter that you're on. The info level uses A, through M to designate the different levels. We want to go to level J and it'll say set in order to set the time. To begin the process, push the center knob. The hour is blinking, so we're going to set it to the hour. Let's say it's three o'clock. I'm going to then set the minutes. Say it's 3.30. At this point, the time is set to back out. I'm gonna push the four square button once and I'm back out at the main menu. And you'll notice that the, the time is set. Now, I set it to 3.30. It's currently 3.30 a.m. So here's another aspect of this controller is it's a 24 hour clock. Unless it's truly 3.30 in the morning, I'm gonna to wanna to go back in Go back to the letter J and set it for the correct time for three o'clock in the afternoon. At this point, what I want to do is now tell the pump which mode it's going to operate under. To do that, I need to go to the service mode. To get into the service level, I need to power down the display then push and hold the four square button until the display lights back up. I'll see that I'm at parameter number one. It's blinking. Turn the knob until you get to parameter number 11, RC, recirculation. You'll notice it's currently set to off. If I push the knob, the off will begin to blink, which means I can turn the knob and select internal. It'll say ITNL external, ETNL, or crossover. Those three modes use the 24-hour clock on the controller to set the program time. In this case, I'm going to tell the pump that it's running an external loop. To back out of the service level, push the four square button once and power up the display. So once you've set the time and you've told the pump what type of mode it's going to operate under, you're now going to notice when you back out to the regular screen, the little clock icon, the radiator icon, and you're gonna see some numbers down here at the bottom of the display. What that means is the 24 hour clock is what we're showing here on the bottom of the digital display. The highlighted or darkened hours that you see are those periods of the day when the pump is going to be active and, and when it will be trying to keep the recirc loop warm. If you're happy with the default programming, which is from 5 a.m. until 9 a.m., and then again from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., you're done. You don't need to do anything else. If I wanted to expand any of those time periods or shorten them or add any additional periods throughout the day when I want this pump to operate, I need to use the clock button to program that. So simply push the clock button once, it'll say ACT, 
Turn the knob one click to the right until it says set. Push the center knob, and at this point, you'll notice the cursor is highlighted at the midnight position. You'll notice as you turn the knob forward, you're gonna cycle through the hours of the day. So if I wanna add, instead of from 5 a.m., I wanna set this from 4.30 a.m., I can add that to the beginning segment, continue on to the middle of the day or a little bit longer, increase that morning segment just to have the pump running more often. And at that point, if I'm good with what I've set, push and hold the center knob until you're back at ACT. When you're there, push the clock button. It'll return to the regular screen and you'll notice the new programmed period is, is set. So the research pump is now programmed and ready to go. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us for any additional support.